Hello, my tree tribe, and welcome to Wellness Wednesday. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Altair Cambata, and I am a certified clinical herbalist and nutritionist, and I work as a life coach. And today I've been tasked with the incredibly fun prompt of talking to you about a seed and in particular a pomegranate seed. And I don't know about you, but certainly when I think about pomegranates, the first thing that comes to mind um, <laughs> is the memory of peeling one of these things and working with the seeds and uh, these, these little rubies, these gemstones inside this fruit just bursting with all of these gorgeous seeds, this multitude and abundance of of seeds and uh, in fact there are between 200 and 1300 seeds per pomegranate. Anyone who's ever peeled one knows that it's a very messy and time-consuming process. Um, that's also how the fruit gets its name. So palm being derived from the word for apple and granite meaning uh, to be seeded. So um, there's been a long history of cultivation of pomegranate for at least 7,000 years. And uh, Carl Jung, the Swiss psychoanalyst famous for discussing symbolism and mythos and the collective unconscious, he said that if you were to ever dream of pomegranate, then it should be considered a symbol for healing and fertility. And what's really interesting about pomegranate is that uh, we know that it has a very long history of medicinal use, and certainly pomegranate has been the muse for philosophers and artists and poets throughout the ages as a symbol for fertility. Uh, but what we know now is that not only do pomegranates contain high amounts of polyphenols, um, and more specifically anthocyanins, which give the, the fruit its very deep red magenta color, um, and that these polyphenols are notorious for having very high anti-inflammatory actions on the body and also antioxidant actions. So um, it's actually been discovered that pomegranates have more antioxidant potential than green tea um, and red wine, um, but that also, curiously enough, pomegranates contain estrone. And estrone is a type of estrogen that's actually, um, it's, it's created endogenously in the human body. So women create estrone in their ovaries, and it's one of the three types of endogenously produced estrogen in the body. And uh, pomegranates contain this exact same compound. And in fact, they have the highest concentrations of estrone um, of any plant in the plant kingdom. So it's really, it's no accident that it has a long history of medicinal application and a, an association with fertility. And of course, we can't talk about pomegranate uh, without talking about the famous Greek myth of Persephone and her descent into the underworld. And as the story goes, she either willingly uh, went and was enchanted by Hades, the god of the underworld, and traveled with him down uh, into the depths of his realm, um, or she was kidnapped. But in any case, her mother, Demeter, who is the Greek goddess of the harvest and uh, fertility, um, uh, both of, of procreation and also of crops, she was so struck with grief to learn that her daughter had disappeared that she could no longer do her work in the world. And plants started to wither and birds and bees disappeared and earth plummeted into its first autumn and its first winter. And the people were so depressed. They were so um, grieved that they went to Zeus and said, please, you have to do something. We miss the ripe fruits hanging from the trees. We miss um, being able to harvest our grains. 
And so Zeus had a chat with Hades and said, look, you know, Persephone really needs to come back up here. Uh, her mother really misses her. And Hades was reluctant to let her go. So what they ended up doing was striking up a deal whereby if Persephone ate anything while she was in the underworld, then she would have to spend part of the year there. And Hades convinced her to eat six pomegranate seeds. And so the deal was that she then had to spend six months of the year below the surface of the earth, but for the remaining six months of the year, she could be reunited with her mother. And that's the story of why we have seasons and an explanation for the cyclical nature of the seasons and the harvest. But of course, there is a deeper underlying metaphor here at work, which is this, um, the necessity of having the polarity of life and death. And in fact, there can be no life without a period of germination and incubation and darkness. And as the famous storyteller Clarissa Pincola Estes says, there can be no life without death. There can be no renewal without death. And um, in her opinion, the mythos of Persephone's descent into the underworld is symbolic of the fact that we must experience periods of darkness and stillness before we can generate creative ideas that blossom into being and that this cycle is um, an, an essential aspect of creation and the creative force. So as we enter the spring months, we've just experienced the spring equinox, um, and as we are all called, rather unexpectedly, to spend more time in stillness and incubation, um, it's important to remember that this period won't last forever and that it's in fact only from periods of darkness and introspection and the absence of life that life is eventually able to flourish. So I hope we can all keep that in mind as uh, we um, engage with the opportunity that is this um, change in our routine. And anyway, I hope that you learned a couple of new things about pomegranates and I look forward to connecting with you, uh, be it uh, virtually or eventually um, <laughs> physically and in person. And until then, enjoy all the content that's coming out of my tree. And thank you so much for listening and thank you for supporting us.